They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... Harvest Energy Solutions, Harvest Cabins, when you absolutely have to get away. The city of Stanford, Kentucky, come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, your village shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, the Cowboy Cooking Edition. You know what, as we're out and about, people talk to us all the time about this show. They do. And what do they say? A they lot. love the cowboy cooking the best. That's their favorite. Dutch ovens are cheap. They cost a lot less than a gas range. Right. I guarantee you. I bet they do. Look at a good gas range. Look at it. And you can do this yeah. basically the same thing. All right, we've done a lot of stuff on this Dutch oven cooking, cowboy cooking, so on and so forth. But today we got a kind of a full show. We're going to have to get busy yeah. because we're losing light. It's about time for a ham. A Dutch oven cowboy cooking ham. Yummy. How about that? Sounds good. So simple. Now what I did is I got a ham for you and me. I didn't want to do some big honking ham and I wanted it to fit in the Dutch oven. Right. So that's about a four and a half, five pound ham. So we're going to put our Dutch oven, we're going to set the dial at 350. Now we're going to cook that until it gets up to about 155. We'll have okay. put our meat thermometer, always have your meat thermometer. We want an internal temperature of about 155. Now we're going to do a simple glaze that is absolutely delicious. What is always a good side for ham? Sweet potatoes. You dang tootin'. The good thing about the Dutch oven is we can fit those sweet potatoes right in there. It takes about the same amount of time. It'll get them Get them in that juice. Oh, yes, what I'm talking about. Now we're gonna make a glaze. It's very simple. We're gonna use right here, we got our juicer out, and we like pineapple. That is a cup and a half. Oh, it smells good. Oh, ooh, I could drink that right now. Yeah. One cup of brown sugar. Oops. Aren't you glad we're outside? Yes. That would have been all over the counter and the floor. Now this is gonna be a fairly thick sauce. One more thing we're gonna do and add to this is just a little bit of grated ginger. How much you want? Is that enough? That's plenty. Okay. We'll probably go, if I had to guess, let's go about half. Okay. I, li I like your little grater there. That's nice, isn't it? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna mix this up, thicken it up, and we're gonna use about half of it. I'm gonna take the other half, I'm gonna put it back in the jar. Later on, when it's about an hour from being done, I'm gonna pour that over top again. Now what happens if that pineapple juice and brown sugar gets on the, oh no, what happens if it gets on the sweet potatoes? <gasps> It'll be delicious. <laughs> it makes it even better. So there's a wonderful side effect. Something else we're going to do tonight, rendering lard. Remember, oh, you can't eat lard, you can't eat yeah. this, you can't eat that, you can't eat meat. You can't. Well, they're kind of backing up. Well, they're, mm -hmm. they're backing up big time. So now they're saying you get your omega-3s and vitamin D from lard. If you get your fat from pasture pigs, mm -hmm. there's nothing in it. You know, if you get if you go organic, and if you use the leaf fat that's surrounding the kidneys, that is the most pure, the most white hmm. lard. Now, if you get lard from the store, and there's nothing against lard from the store, but they have really put processed stuff right. in there. They've bleached right. it to make it look more and more white. If you're rendering your own lard, there's so much information out there. Low and slow will get you a better, whiter, 
more pure looking lard. If you do it faster, we're gonna put some in that pot right over top of the fire there, it will have a darker appearance and it will taste more porky. But that's okay, isn't it? That's that okay. Good. Now, when I'm frying chicken and things like that, I like the darker lard right. because it has a little bit of that pork taste and it has more of a piggy taste. Right. Now, we'll show all this process in a minute, but let's get back to the ham right now. All right, now we've got a nice, that's thickening up. All right, now I'm gonna take my little wok. Okay. And I'm just gonna grab this like such. And I've put a little bit of lard in the bottom, that's a tiny bit. Nikki, could you bring me some sweet potatoes and a pineapple? Sure can. Sweet potato. One for me, one for sweet you. Sweet potato. Pineapple. Oh, it's going to be terrible. Let these pineapples brown all up in here. And here's our glaze. Yummy. We're going to put about half of that in here. Oh, it sounds, it sounds and smells yeah. good. Put our top on. Pork fat. That that is. <laughs> lard, we're gonna make lard. You know what? Let's cut that into tiny little chunks. I like these little scissors. You know, it does make it a little bit easier. Yeah. And what we're gonna do is basically put these over heat, obviously. We got some going on the crock pot up there that's going really slow. We're gonna try to get more of a white, pure lard for pastries and things like that. You know, back in the old day, they'd put it in a big kettle and they'd stir it up and let it roll. And I remember kids bringing to school little lunch bags. And the side of the lunch bags would be like greasy. Really? With the grease spots. We knew what it was. It was Cracklins. So I never had that as a kid. So after all this cooks down, this remains. So what are cracklins? It's the leftover stuff. You can take them. We got a skillet over here. When we're done, we'll set those aside. Then we'll just brown them in a skillet, put some salt on them. Tastes kind of like pork rinds or really? bacon. You can put them in salad. Yummy. They're absolutely wonderful. But rendering lard, it still happens all over the place. And I think it's going to get more and more popular. When people are finding out this is so much better than the processed, any of the processed oils, it's good for you. It's, listen to this, heart healthy. Really? So, you know, anything in moderation, but again, the omega-3s, the vitamin D. Now this is gonna be a fairly lengthy process, but again, the lower and slower you go, the lighter it's gonna be. If you put it in a hot, hot pan like that and render it real quick, you're gonna get a little more color in your lard. And it's just, you know, it's just as good, but it is gonna have a little more piggy flavor. Now you can go to your butcher shop and ask for pig fat. And guess what? They will hook you up. Our ham is cooking nicely. It smells good. I haven't opened it up yet. I'm going to wait and check it in about another hour. I'm thinking that can go two and a half, maybe three hours. I'm going to check it internally when I open okay. it up. And when I see it's about an hour out, I'm going to start thinking about, hmm, cornbread? Yummy. Not just any cornbread. Cornbread with cracklings, that's an old fashioned thing. Oh my gosh. Now, how can you make that even better? How about some onions? Yummy. And cracklings. I brought an onion. I'm telling you what, I can't really talk, my mouth's watering all of a sudden. Can I ask you a question? Yes. What's with this? <laughs> what do you mean, what's with this? Is, it, you is like it time beer? again? Is it's, it? it's fall. Okay, so for the winter. I'm gonna be deer hunting, hunting and I'm, I'm camouflaging my face. Okay, I like it. You like it? Yeah. What's that on your, what's this? <laughs> I don't know. It's nothing. I just thought it looked pretty on my finger. Bless That's your mean. heart. Cutting up some. Tell, well, tell them what happened. No, I'm not, I don't think you should tell people this. She I get. Hurt, I up. hurt myself easily. <laughs> <laughs> she was cutting up the pork. And I looked at you and cut my finger. So it's your fault that I looked at you because your beard threw me off. You know, we've got our cracklings over there looking beautiful. They're getting smaller and smaller that and more and nice. more large is rendering off of that. Now I've got that above the fire. We went ahead and I just put a bag of charcoal in there earlier so we'd have briquettes for that. But I'm spacing it out. I've probably got it, oh, I don't know, two feet over the fire and it's just the right temperature. Not to get a rapid boil, but to really right. ooze that out of there. In just a minute, when those pieces of fat continue to shrink and get browner and browner, we're gonna take that and strain it and we're gonna have, Lord, I'm telling you what, 
I can't hardly wait. You know, we're, we're guarding and protecting and trying to show the old-fashioned ways, the things that we saw when we were kids. It's right. been on the back of our mind, and we kind of let it go. In the, you know, in the 70s and 80s, we got busy, and everybody was doing everything, and they put the old ways behind. Guess what? They're coming back. As we go through life, figure out what's good for you and how much you can do on a little piece of property, and how much you can grow yourself, and how, how much you can put up and can. The one thing that we still haven't got to is the root cellar. Yeah, we need one. Something else we need is to check on our kids down here. Yes, we do. Maury, <laughs> here's what's going on down at, on the farm. Maury is almost five months yeah, old. Yeah, that's you know not what that good. Means? Yeah. What's it mean? Time for babies if we don't watch it. We need to separate Maury him. is becoming amorous. Yes. He loves everybody. And we don't want babies at Christmas. We want babies in the spring. We don't want to have to bring them in and put them right. by the fireplace and have them bouncing through the house. Oh, that would be fun. No, it would not. <laughs> because I'm sure plenty of people out there have had that experience yeah. when they're a kid to have to bring the lambs in. I would much rather have spring lambs. So what we're going to have to do, we'll go down and visit and take a look at everybody here in a little while, but what we're going to have to do is separate Maury. Now he's got two little friends that are weathered. Right. We need to eat them. We need to fatten them up <laughs> because they're, they're getting there, but we need to just, just right. put a little more meat on their bones because they're going to go to the butcher shop. And then we can turn them on the spit. We can right turn them over on there. the spit right over here. Now that's part of life. Right. Now the ladies, they get to stay. If you're a girl in our family, and you know what, our original girls, I'm sorry, I love. I the just girls. can't do anything with them. Yeah. And even Mona, she's so cute. Yeah, they'll die of old age here on the farm. But if you're a boy at our house, we eat you. I mean, unless it's you, of course. You're the only boy that lives here. <laughs> Let's check these crack ones. We're getting close. All right, now look what we have here. Wow, that actually makes a noise. You hear it sighing and hissing and popping towards the end. You know you're there. That's amazing what it did. It's like little potatoes. Here. Can I eat those? Yeah, you can eat them. So these are what everybody's heard about the cracklings. And that's the noise they make while they're cooking over the top of the lard. Now, when we get this all off, we're gonna ladle this up and put it in small jars because, you know, typically when we're cooking with lard, it's we're cooking with it in the bottom of a pan like you would use vegetable oil right. or whatever. And this is a small batch, of course, because we're just showing you how we do it. But the next step now is to set these aside We'll take you some cheesecloth. We'll use two or three layers. Put you a strainer, pour it into your jar, and basically let it sit there till it cools, and then it will kind of become like baking grease. Now, that is mm. not the white clear stuff, but, okay, Taryn. Mm, 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 mm. I could eat these. <laughs> okay, we got enough for maybe one more jar. Let's okay. take another jar. What we're gonna do right here, so we're going to take our cracklings, just because we can't resist it. We're going to pour them off in a skillet and take some salt. And we're just basically going to turn these over and get them nice and crisp. You talk about good, man. You put cracklings in cornbread? Are you kidding me? I like onions, too. While she's getting the onion out and getting ready to cut it up for our cornbread mix, let's see how that's looking. Oh, ho, 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 I'm seeing. Whenever I'm cooking any kind of pork and it's got a bone in it, you start seeing it separate like that, you know you're getting mighty close. Now, I'm going to take my unfinished portion of my glaze. I'm going to go back over top of that again. Oh, that's not gonna be good. Yeah, it's time to start the crackling cornbread right now. Crackling. I can just eat those. Oh my. You know what? Wow. It tastes like pork rind and bacon fat. Like the best part of the bacon. I knew it just explodes. You don't think about this stuff because you don't have cracklings sitting around every day. Fresh, like. Oh. But back in the day, everybody put cracklings in their cornbread. Let's just go do. Well, they're hot too. This is going to be terrible. I bet. Now Ooh. something else I put in my cornbread. You may not like the idea of it, but we put onions. And I like my cornbread a little sweeter. Sometimes I like it old Southern style with you know 
absolutely no sugar. But when you put the onions in, and the sugar, yeah. and then you put the richness of these crackling. I didn't add sugar yet. I was waiting on mm, you. Mm, mm. Oh, that's good. Just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> mm. This can be like dessert. Yes, it is. Let's take some of our fresh lard, pour off in the bottom of our little cornbread pan, and get to rolling. Crackling cornbread, are you kidding me? We're getting ready to go see the critters, and we're gonna have some kind of dinner here in just a little while. All right, here's what we've got. Look here. All right, point out our little guy. <laughs> he's the one buttoning everybody. Who's buttoning everybody right now. So he's going to have to be separated because I do not want wintertime babies. So we have eight chickens. We had nine the other day. Maggie. Uh-oh. If I find out you ate my chicken, I'll tell you what. It's not Momus. It's not Moses. We, we, we know what goes on around here. The little chicken coop has been so wonderful that our buddy made. That has worked out so well because the dogs are sort of protecting the chickens. But it's worked out so well because obviously if a raccoon got in here, these guys would make quick work of that. Yeah. But our flock is growing. He has to go. Now, we figured out how we're going to do this. We may as well go ahead and talk about it. What we're going to do is take some of our fence. This fence is so great because of the fact that you can move it wherever you want it. We're going to make an extension. We're going to put some corn in here, which they lose their mind over. Once they all get gathered around, I'm going to grab a hold. I might have to get help. I might have to get Darren. I think Darren should help come you. Come down here and help me. But we'll make another little extension out here. Once they get in the car and we'll grab them. I'll watch this. Yeah, you can't I, I can't get hurt. Yeah. got issues. But we're going to set them right over here, put them a new area out, and keep That'd him from doing the things that he's feeling inclined to do right now. It's about to get dark, so Let's our see. ham is getting close. All right, leave my chickens alone, or we'll have to have another talk. Shame on you. <laughs> All right, you know what? Let's do talk about is our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Like it, see where we're going and what we're doing and talk with us, chat with us, share recipes. Also, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. All of our recipes are on there, all of our shows that you might not have seen before. We are back in our new season. We're up and running, new stuff on YouTube. You feeling pretty good? I'm feeling pretty good. You know what, a special shout out to somebody who's really thoughtful to you and sent nice letters and prayers. Charlie and Coralie, hi, thank you. Coralie and Charlie, two of our favorite Sweet people, people in the world. You know what, again, we don't have viewers on Tim Worms Country Kitchen. We have an extended family. The greatest people, the sweetest people, and we have found new friends everywhere we go. They tell us they want to see more cowboy cooking. Hey, if you say you want to see it, we're going to do it. Right. It's absolutely no trouble for us to sit out here in this beautiful weather. It's getting cooler. Yeah, Thank it's goodness, nice. so there'll be a lot more of this kind of stuff. In just a minute, we're going to chuck our cornbread. It's got to be getting close. You know what, it's fall. You can smell it in the air. It's, it's almost here. The leaves are starting to come down, and you ladies, do some fascinating things, and guys too. I mean, look at the door and stuff. I know. People make some cool things, especially one of our friends. We're gonna show her right now. Carolyn is gonna show you how to do something like this. Color coordinated, put it on the door, put it on the window, and you get some beautiful stuff. Here's Carolyn. Best and the best way that I tell everyone to start making a wreath is get your garland. Instead of buying pigs because your pigs are going to cost more, you can get a garland and just unwind it. You just start taking pieces off. When you take the pieces off, then you're going to see something like this. You get your glue gun. So when you put it in, if you're going to put it on your front door and you have high winds, it's not going to blow everything out. We have a lot of pine trees in Kentucky, so I like things that's got a little bit of pine when you're doing, doing your reef in the fall. Country, that's what we're all about. The sunflowers, all the women love the sunflowers. And when I get this down, I can bend that, and you can take the sunflower and bend it down so it starts getting that natural look. Making a reef is something that I did not know how to do. So it doesn't take any special person to make a reef. 
get what you want, set down, pre-try it before you do your glue. That would be a good way to do it. It made me feel proud that I could do this. But anybody can that wants to. It's like anything else you first have to have to want to. But it's cheaper if you make your own wreath. And I always say it's like food. It's better to have too much than not enough. I love to eat. Now I want the little owl to be peeping out of the leaves. Just like he's sitting in a tree. Now what I do with some of them, you just go down here and you put your hot glue on. You want enough to where he's not going to be falling out and you don't lose him. You want your owl to be cute because the owl is one of the most popular things there is right now. The wreath is, this is grapevine wreaths made in Kentucky. This is a burlap bow and I've got a wire on it. So I'm going to go up here. Because you want to do the size of your ribbon or your bow that you put in it to sort of match the size of your wreath. You don't want to overpower with your bow. And there's your wreath. All right, you ready to see if our crackling cornbread is ready? Yes, I am. Oh, yummy. <laughs> see if it's done. Yep, it is. Take wow. That. Set it aside. You know what's going on over here. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. You want a big honking piece that we can just cut? Yeah, we'll share it. Look at that. That looks delicious. Oh, look at that. And we can just, uh, that's cutting so easy. That's a beautiful thing. Wow. Right there. Yummy. Crackling cornbread. This hand right here. Mm. Now, of course, we're starving. Sweet potatoes are perfect. Mmm. Mmm. That might be the best, most moist ham, if I do say so myself, mm -hmm. that I have ever eaten. Now, look, look here. Off to the side. Oh, wow. Look how that's lightening up. And it's getting thicker. It's thicking it up, isn't it? it's cool. You know what, if you think, well, I can't do this because I don't have pigs, go to your butcher shop, ask them for some pork fat. Mm -hmm. Cut it up, put it over the fire. You can do this on, your, on the top of your stove. Very simple. Start at low temperature, work your way up. If you want to make it really, really white, cook it for a long period of time. You know what, that right there is just absolutely gorgeous. In a minute, I'm gonna jump in this plate head first, but oh. first, it's that time of the day we have to talk about the fact that it's all about good times, good friends, and good, and good eats. eats. We'll see you mm. next week with a brand new show on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. That's some good ham right mm. there. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Diamond Gusset Jeans. The original gusset jean. Careful craftsmanship. Continual improvement. Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987. Hi, Tom. Hey, how's the college visit? You remember it. It's good. Does it make the shortlist? 
Yeah, I'm afraid so. Knowing our clients personally is what we do. It's okay. This is what we've been planning for. And with over 13,000 financial advisors, we do it a lot. It's why Edward Jones is the big company that doesn't act that way.